Hello, everyone. I'm Qing Chen Wang from Alibaba Cloud. You also can call me Alex Wang. I'm interested in large-scale cluster management and scaling. I love to participate in open source community. Thanks for your attention. Hello, everyone. My name is Kenny Bo from Alibaba Cloud. Today, my colleague Qing Chen and I will talk about the practice of C-group resource scheduling in Kubernetes environment. In our business scenario, such as database service, many online instances need to dynamically increase the resource limitation during operations and can't accept the impact of poor restart. Then we need to develop a service to configure the C-group for the payload. Also, more applications run on the bare metal instance in Alibaba Cloud, and they meet the multi new map performance problem. Then applications may require new map awareness, CPU core bonding, reduce the data copy between CPU cache, and speed up the data processing tasks. We have developed a combined scheduling system based on Kubernetes scheduler framework and the C group controllers. The scheduler perceives the C group's level resource, such as new map, CPU core, a memory limit, and a plus scheduler dynamic scheduling to specific nodes. While allowing certain ports is bound to the specified CPU core, the C-group controller can also dynamically adjust the port resource limit without causing the port to restart. Okay, this is the agenda of today's topic. In the first part, I will introduce our practice of C-group resource management. Then, um, my colleague Qing Chen will talk about the CPU scheduling based on the scheduler framework also about some other related works. As we know that CGV is an implementation to limit resource for the process and is the basic ability in dog container. With CGV, we can set the limitation for number of the resource that the process group can use. And also, it can set the priority control of the process group. Also, it can record the number of the resource used by the process group. In our product in Kubernetes environment, Database is in instance is deployed in pods. So we use the resource limitation configurations in container level for the resource limitation, but it is not enough. First, we can only configure the CPU or memory in the container spec. Limitation for the storage is not sub supported. Secondly, the limitation is set with the container starting and can't be changed when the container is in running state. Also, the limitation is only configured for the containers and not for the ports. So we need to develop a service that can dynamic update the C-group limitation, both for the container and the port without the payload restart. And with a single smart controller, resource limitation can automatic configured by some C-group policy. C-group controller is developed just for this purpose. From the perspective of function, with the C-group controller, we can dynamic configure C-group limitation we create a Kubernetes resource, and you not need to care about the port location and the running environment. From the perspective of realization, the C-group controller is a realization of the CRDs for C-groups and C-group policy. With C-group CRD, the controller dynamic configures the C-group limitation for target resource and payload, and the C-group policy makes the policy to automatically adjust C-group resource limitation. With C-group smart controller, Kubernetes can increase resource usage with smart resource allocations. C-group controller also supports, also supports to configure different payloads, include development, server set, demo set, pause. If the limitation is set to the deployment, all pause will be configured. With C-group controller, we can configure the different type of resource for the limitation, include CPU, CPU set, memory and bulk I.O. Kubernetes can only set the limitation for container level. Here, CPU controller supposed to set the limitation both for port and containers. With port resource limitation, all containers in the port will share the resource and share the limitation. In some sharing business, the share limitation in the port level can improve the resource usage. Bulk I.O. can be supposed in CPU controller, but the block device is complex because there are be more than one device in one node. So how to find the block device is important. 
Sego controller supposed to define the block device with multi mode, such as UTFS, volumes, device ID, such as VDX and DEV paths. Now let's talk about the implementation of Sego controller. First, for the definition of the CRD, it defines the resource details for resource belong to which node, the type of resource, and the resource ID. For example, we can define one resource as uh, the BLKRO limitation for the root FS of node 1. The CRD also defines the target payload, including deployment, stable set, gaming set, and port, and also need to point out the target port and target container name. Also, the CRD can record the resource limitation status. With it, the controller can check the limitation setting is complete, complete, completed or not. Next, let's check, talk about the main process. SQL controller works the SQL CRDs from the API server, and if the new SQL object is created, the controller will get it and pass the parameters. The controller will check the payload, for example the de development or pause, and get the target node ID and the container information. And the third step is the controller will create a job by the ex executor, which will run in the target mode, target node. The created job is configured with the target payload and limitation configurations. The job, the job port will get the stakeholder pass and the target container or port, and then it sets the limitation value to the target pass file. Also, the job port records the limitation setting status to the CR, which can point out the SQL limitation setting is successful or failed. Next, let's look at some examples. The first one is to set CPU and memory for one port, named the port CPU. We should configure the container name belongs to the port, and also we can configure the CPU and memory limitation at the same time. The second one and the third one is setting the CPU set for the development or on one special port. We should configure the target container name for that. The first YAM template is setting the BLKRO for the block device. We can set the device read or write BPS or device read or write RPS for one device. As mentioned before, the target device can be defined as rootfs or volumes or device ID in the target node. And in this example, we set to the rootfs. So above, we have introduced the SQL controller design and implementation. We can find the SQL CRD is only to configure the SQL limitation for different payloads. It is automatic, but not smart. Here, we add a new CRD named SQL policy to define the SQL, uh, SQL allocate policy for the special resource. The SQL policy can support the spread resource lim allocations policy, which makes resource, resource limitation average between the payloads work on the resource. The CRD can define the target resource, include target node, target resource type, target resource ID, which is unicode defined, defined in the class. Also, the CRD can define the total resource limitation threshold. For example, the total RPS for the block device resource or the percentage of the CPU or memory for one specified node. Also, just like the SQL CRD, the SQL policy should record the port limitation on the target resource in the status field, which can show you the limitation details on one resource. Next, let's talk about the main process. The SQL policy implemented the CRD logic for the SQL policy. The controller watched the pause, the nodes, the SQL policy object from the API server. If the controller is find a pod is added or removed from the target SQL policy, it will create a SQL object CR to adjust the resource limitation for the different payload. For example, if a set of pod related to one SQL policy increases from the number of two to three, the new resource limitation is rebalanced for the for all the three pods and the SQL, SQL object is created to configure the new limitation for the three pods. Step three is the controller will watch the status of created SQL ob object and update the status and the related pod list to 
figure policy object. Let's look at an example for the figure policy. In the below figure policy template, we define the target node information with the node selector, which can define one node or more nodes in the cluster. Also, we define the resource type, resource ID, then we can identify the unique resource in the cluster. When resource type is defined as BLKIO, the resource RPS limit can be defined to the target device total RPS limitation value. And if the resource type is CPU or memory, the resource CPU percentage or resource memory percentage can be configured. And the policy field is defined as the resource limitation policy. You can configure as a spread, which means the same limitation will be configured between different payloads as soon as possible. Also, in the status field, the status shows the status of one source limitation, rebalance actions. The processing value means the one balance job is in the process, and new balance job can't be started immediately. The payload field shows the resource limitation setting, and you can find the pause works on that and the limitations details of them. If you want to, if you want to enable the resource limitation policy for the special special payload, the SQL policy defined defined definition should be added to the payload annotations, just like the pause example. Pause dot SQL dot Alibaba Cloud dot com as one policy object, then the SQL controller will get the configurations and uh, do the source limit balance. The below graph is an example of one pod in the payload, which is configured to a BLKR RPS type SQL policy. We find that, we find that the pod RPS is changed over time. OK, the above is about the SQL resource management topic. And below, my colleague Ching Chan will bring the topic of CPU scheduling based on scheduling framework. Let's welcome. Next, I will introduce the content of CPU scheduling based on scheduling framework. First of all, this picture shows the CPU topology of the multi core machine that we use more frequently at present. A topology is divided into three layers, socket, human node, and core. Each core has a dedicated level one or level two cache. This is referred to as private cache. No other core can override. The level three is shared between cores, CPUs belonging to different Neumann nodes to access different parts of memory at different speeds. Based on these characteristics, we think it is necessary to find CPU scheduling. Our goal is, one, to reduce the program loss caused by frequent switching between multiple cores. Two, to reduce the loss caused by frequent switching between different Newman nodes. Third, to select the best CPU scheduling result in cluster dimension. This is our complete architecture. We have three extension components. First, CPU scheduling plugins based on scheduling framework. Second, C group controller. It is responsible for C group operation. This is mentioned in previous part. Third, C group agent. It is responsible for reporting the CPU topology and the real CPU, real load of CPU. This will be used in scheduling decisions. A process is like this. Step one, when we add to a new node in Kubernetes cluster, C group agent will report the topology to API store. Step two, could be scheduled which is the port creation event. Step three, scheduling decision is made according to the algorithm. Step four, could be scheduled will create C group CI for CPU set. Step five, C group controller 
which is the, the C Group CR creation event. Step six, C Group controller creates job for C Group CPU set operation. Step seven, the job will complete the CPU bounding operation. Our CPU scheduling is based on scheduling framework. The scheduling framework is proposed in release 1.15 and uh, is expected to graduate in release 1.20. We have implemented the following our following four extension points. Filter. Filter will fill out the nodes that can't meet the requirements of the pod for CPUs. Score, score will select optimal CPU scheduling result by algorithm. Result, result will first resolve the optimal CPU scheduling result to prevent reallocation to other pods. And it will clean the CPU scheduling result if failure occurs in bounding cycle. Post bind. Post bind will create a post C group CR to store the CPU scheduling result. Our scheduling algorithm is mainly divided into two parts. This is the first part, new man node selection. The top priority is the CPU core should be assigned to a single new man node to prevent the loss caused by frequent switching between new man nodes is the first thing to pay attention to. As shown in the picture, we will choose new man node 1 in version 1 and the new man node 4 in version 2 instead of other new man nodes. If multiple new man nodes meet condition 1, they will be selected according to the real CPU load. The real CPU load is reported by C group agent. If a single new man node can't be made, it needs to be in a single socket. Then the second part is core selection. Here we have two policies. The first one is try to make a side processors belong to the same core. Then they will share the level one and level two cache. As shown in the picture, we will choose new man node one or three instead of two. The second one is try to choose the relatively idle new man nodes. As shown in the picture, new man node three is better than one. Next, I will introduce our results under different workloads. For CPU sensitive Java computing workload, time will be reduced by 20%. For CPU sensitive Java or Go web application, QPS will increase by 20% to 30% on average. The following picture shows the trend. For my so-called workload, according to our actual use of data, find that insert TPS increased by 13% and select, select TPS increased by 10%. For video transcoding workload, we choose to convert MPG4 to H264 with different size and concurrency. The test result shown in the picture below about 10% efficiency improvement. Because the result of scheduling is optimal result at the moment of port creation, as shown in the first picture, Due to limited resources, some pods are allocated CPUs across new man nodes. After a period of time, the CPUs allocated by pod, one, pod A are released. 
Pod B can be allocated from the single Newman node. The scheduler will create a new C group CR. It is not about modifying the original. The purpose is to prevent prevent data conflicts in direct modification. Scheduling framework will watch the event to update the scheduling cache. In case of data inconsistency, the origin, original date of schedule shall prevail. Finally, C group controller adjust port B to the single Newman node. In this way, we dynamically adjust the CPU size to achieve better results. Finally, I will introduce other related work that we are working on. In order to better manage scheduling related plugins, a new project scheduler plugins is created to facilitate users to manage different plugins. Users can define their own plugins directly based on this project. We have completed or are implementing the following plugins. Co-scheduling, also we can call gun scheduling, capacity scheduling, node resource allocatable, real load aware scheduling. The link is below. If you are interested, you can learn more about it. Our feature work is mainly divided into two parts. The first is make Spark run better on Kubernetes. We will enhance the scheduling to meet the needs of the Spark. At the same time, we will also carry out data acceleration work. The second is heterogeneous resource scheduling, like GPU topology scheduling. OK, that's all about our topic. Thank you for listening. If you are interested, contact us by email or Slack. Thank you so much.